श्रीमती जय श्री रघुनंदन का वे हमारी अगली वक्ता है I take the pleasure of requesting her to kindly share a brief note on the expertise of the Panchayat Development Index report. She is former additional chief secretary government of Tamil Nadu and also the chairperson of the committee on PDI. She will be joining us virtually online. So a warm welcome to you ma'am. It's over to you. Thank you. Honorable uh, Minister Shri Kapil Kumarishwar Patil ji the respected secretary of the ministry of panchayati raj shri sunil kumar officers and consultants of the ministry of panchayati raj and other ministries members of the committee and all representatives from the states namaskar the speakers before me have already spoken a lot of things about the panchayat development index and its various aspects since i am coming online and i didn't want to have the internet issues and say am i heard am i audible I have done a bit of the recording of the various aspects of the report, and would like to start this presentation with the first of the things that you would like to place. Can this be played, please? I have done it as a video. Mm -hmm. The Secretary, the Ministry of Panchayat, and presentation with thanks. Thanks to Mr. Sunil Kumar, the Secretary, the Ministry of Panchayat, and. who has given this opportunity to prepare the panchayat development index and present this report of the county in this forum to the officers of the ministry of panchayati raj and the team in particular pr manoj bharat in recent times chandrani and puja my thanks to all members for their valuable inputs and in particular to dr kalshetty and his maharashtra team Without whose untiring efforts, this report would not have been possible. My thanks also to NIC Sunita Jain. My thanks to the ministries who gave their input. My thanks to Kranti who has prepared this report in the document form. To IIT Madras for their initial support, and to the Natch Institute Bangalore. For the calculations that they have done and the presentation of those calculations in this report, I would like to start my presentation with thanks. Thanks to Mr. Sunil Kumar, the Secretary of the Ministry of Panchayat. Can it be stopped? Can it be stopped? Please. Opportunity to prepare the Panchayat oh. Development Index. Yes, the presentation, presentation be stopped. Having a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so this was, I think, just the start of the thing. Thanking all of you for this opportunity. Uh, the next thing I'd like to present is the proof of concept, which was mentioned, which is the very basis for this entire report. This would be it answers questions like: Is it possible for panchayats to do this? Isn't that too much of data? A lot of skeptics and critics as to whether this is really doable. But the 30 gram panchayats in Maharashtra have shown that yes, it is all doable. So can you please play the second presentation that I have sent you, which is on the proof of concept of what we need to do done with of Maharashtra. They have collected the data, and based on that data that was collected, they have worked the various layers of the Panchayat Development Index. This is the Panchayat Development Index itself, which can be seen where maximum number of panchayats are in the C grade, and there are a few of them in the B grade. The top three themes are healthy panchayat, self-sufficient, and good governance panchayat, and the bottom three themes are the child-friendly, water-sufficient, and human-friendly. You know, the thematic performance we see in the poverty-free village, we can see some scores and grades of certain aspects, like six out of eight GPs in grade B in Mirror Block in Sangli. And for a healthy village, we can see that 70% of GPs in Tamilian block in grade A and A plus. Child friendly village, 80% of GPs score between 41 and 50, and 29 out of 30 are in grade C. In a water sufficient village, we have 53% GPs in grade D, and 13 out of 14 GPs in Mirage score between 25 and 35. You can see the position on water sufficient panchayat. Show you the end of the performance. 
Similarly, for a village self-sufficient infrastructure and a socially secure village, which is a matter of concern, where you can find 29 out of 30 GPs in grade C. Green and green village is also seen. The village with good governance has one GP in grade A. And a women-friendly village, you have all 30 GPs in grade C, a matter of great concern. Now, after looking at the thematic level, you can look at the indicator level as well. Where in a poverty free village, if you look at the indicators, here we are looking at Kachanos like this, we can look at other indicators as well. So, how are the GPs faring in anemia Bharat? We have 9 out of 30 GPs who have more than 90% anemic mothers. And if we see NRLM's impact in certain ways, you see that there are 23 of 30 GPs have SHG enrollment of more than 80%, but 9 out of 30 have less than 30% SHG accessing backbones. The grades that are being used, as you know, are achieve a front runner or former aspirant and be valid beginner. So anybody, any panchayat who has done work will at least feel that yes, we're beginning to start doing something. This is the score and the grade that you see of the 30 panchayats. You can see the PDF score as well as the grades. And this is with the color bands that we have made this particular slide. We made this in the report. So you see the dark red ones and the dark green, which are the two ends of the spectrum. This is for the green panchayats and this is for the green. It gives you the position in terms of the themes as well as the PDI. From that at the level of GP, we see the level of the block. What is the average for a block which has been taken based on the weightage of population? So you have it for the four blocks. And since there is only one block in a district, the same score is coming for a district as well. And when you see that, you see both the uh, thematic score in this one and you also have the weightage that has been given which is based on population as I have mentioned. And we have done a calculation to prepare on what is a hypothetical district which has more than one block. So we've taken two or three blocks in the district and used these scores and seen as to how that is different from a block score. State PDI is also calculated based on the four blocks that are there, which is again the population as the weightage. And here you can see the block score and you can see the thematic score of the blocks as well as the state score. We also looked at how we can analyze and present the scores to the panchayat in terms of grouped indicators, which is easier for them to look at and understand rather than look at each individual indicator. For theme 1, for instance, these are the groups income generation, housing, health, social security, food security, water, these are all aspects related to poverty. So for each of the panchayats and for each of the blocks, this was being calculated. And this is also being presented in this manner. So we can make presentations of this in different ways for the panchayats to be able to understand it better, for people who use it in departments, in districts, for all of them to be able to work with it. A state score on grouped indicators is also done. This is something that would be very attractive to the panchayats, which is their performance report and their report card as it is. So they can see their score and the PDI of the thematic score, they can see their rank, rank at the block level. They can see the district score, they can see the state score. They also will be able to see a national score later. This is another way of presenting the GP score, GP rank, grade, block score, district score and state score. We can also see what are the top 10 GPs in the team, what are the bottom 10 GPs in the team. This is for the report and the high report falls in the bottom 10. This is a block view. What we saw till now was what a GP can see. It can be shown in many more ways. The block view is how many GPs are falling in that team in which grade. So you have the poverty grade, there are 12 GPs in E grade, but in water sufficient there are 16 GPs in D. And there are 29 in C, 29 in C, in 29 in C, in child friendly, socially secure, and women friendly. The challenge and limitation of EPI. What is the challenge? Yeah, uh, I think you're running another PPT. Yeah. Uh, I hope it's much clearer to you than it is to me. Uh, now, what we saw in this was the sort of representation by which the information can be provided, which Bagate was talking about, saying they're able to see much more because of this. 
beyond looking at the scores, one needs to also do an analysis as to what is the way in which these scores will enable panchayats to work or to correlate with other aspects of the work. Can you please run the next PowerPoint? This is analysis and interpretation of scores. Not this one, not this one. It is the presentation three. Usually in all workshops and all, I prefer to have my PowerPoint in my control, but no, no. Uh, yeah, can you please play this in terms of grouped indicators? And for all the nine themes, there are groups that have been formed. For instance, if we look at a healthy village, it's much easier to understand it as maternal health, child health, communicable disease, and non communicable disease. This should also be very useful for the departments to be able to focus and look at how they would like to address this and where these scores are low. This is all part of the analysis which is done, where you can see what is the connection between the PDI score and per capita spending. Per capita spending is the finance with the panchayat divided by their population. So it also breaks the myth that you have to have more finance to achieve something, because one of the highest scoring GPs is Lodika Core, which doesn't have any high per capita spending. This is a way of also representing it where you show the correlation between PDI to per capita funds. These are all ways of data visualization make it much easier for anybody who is working with it to understand and see all these figures. This is another way where you have the bands of those red and green and you can see that if you have a high dark green band and you see the score, the listing is from the highest PDI to the lowest PDI. The dark green bands are in the middle. And it, so it is very clear that it is not necessarily that you have more money and so you have the highest point. This is the PDI score to the GP resource on envelope, including all source revenues. So increase of all source revenue and the resource on envelope can be seen as well as if you are looking at say the village health plan which is there, how much is the money given for the village health plan and what is their score of the healthy panchayat can also be correlated and seen as a single graph. This we looked also at the Sankal, Ministry of Panchayati Raj had asked all the panchayats to choose two themes as what they would like to take the Sankal and try to achieve maximum one. So we looked at those and we find that the patterns may be there where then the panchayat may choose the lowest or the highest or something. And if they have the scores, they will be in a better position to actually make their choices. And here you find that in some of them they have chosen the highest, some have chosen the lowest. They can always make these choices based on the scores that they get. The challenge and limitation of love. Uh, if you want to get to just hold this. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is not the uh, video. Uh, so we did see what the uh, proof of concept is able to show. And uh, so from here, if we just take it back to PDI in context. Some of the speakers earlier have mentioned certain aspects of it. So if we can play the one of looking at PDI from the global context to the panchayat level context. That's the presentation for, yes. Provide better data for better lives. This is from the UN SDG report 2022. So we believe that the knowledge that we are getting in terms of the PDI will enable better data use and for better lives. This is the UN Secretary General's data strategy and the PDI completely resonates with this. He looks at a vision, the outcomes, the principles, the capabilities which need to be nurtured for analytics and data management and enablers and a roadmap and how the priorities are to be chosen. This is a vision that is set there as per his data strategy. We have a vision too for the LSDGs. There are priorities for data action which will be selected by the GP. There are capabilities that will enable us to unlock our full data potential. The analytics which is extremely important. The data management which is necessary. SDG and LSDGs. The two are correlated. The SDGs have goals from both the National Indicator Framework and from the SDG India Index. 
And here we have the LSDGs from which the themes, the local indicator framework, and the Panchayat Development Index. The correlations within the existing programs and, and systems that are there. We have the correlation we've established between the RGSA and the PDI, between the GPDP and the PDI, the um, mapping that has been done between what's available in the GPDP for use by the panchayats and total that is LBLIF. The LIF has been mapped also to the 29 subjects. We can see that they depend towards women and child development, social welfare, welfare of weaker sections, where you have also seen that the present scores are quite low in the 30 panchayats and health and sanitation. We have also correlated between the PDI and the National Panchayat Awards. And if we look at these in terms of what we have been able to see currently is that the GPDP is a small subset of the LI and the NPA has a few indicators outside of the LI. Ideally, it should move into a position where the NPA is a subset of the LIF and the PDI calculation. The GPDP needs to be growing larger and finally to the level of LIF and even beyond as the panchayats may want. And this is Mission Antonia, which was the basis of preparing GPDP earlier. Now we recommend that it should be the LIF, which already the ministry has started doing. Here you find that 82% of the MA was being covered under social self-sufficient self infrastructure. And what was going for socially secure was much less. This is the correlation between the LIF, GPDP, NPA, and MA for the extent that has been already found to be uh, on the same number of indicators. So you have that in that you have some which are in MA, not in the GPDP, in MA, not in the LIF. So you have these interesting figures by which you can see how they are presently correlated. We also looked at PDI correlation to e Gram Swaraj and the Sankar as I already mentioned. And we find that socially just village with good governance women really are very healthy as compared to certain others. The scores perhaps will push them to more of these rather than taking only the same solution. This is what will come in, in the future when we work on data sharing and all this time is the local government act. So uh, this was the PDI in context and uh, as uh, I think Prasanjay had mentioned there was a process that the committee had taken up and how we went about doing our work in brief. Can you please play the next presentation? This is the process yes. that we had followed in the committee. We started with the LSDG report and taken the LIF from it. We had discussions with ministries, we had discussions with states and hilly states. We had a panchayat interaction a field visit which was Yeshida, we went to Pune, we met with the village there, we saw their records. It was a great learning, a wonderful experience to really come to what was possible in this report. We had the state's initiatives which we looked at, we had a revised LIF which we prepared, and we went for the proof of concept, the data collection for the proof of concept, the calculation of the PDI thematic scores indicators, the data analysis on different aspects, the PDI which is in context, the challenges and limitations in the recommendations that we have come up with. One thing which needs to be mentioned is that before coming to this workshop, the Maharashtra team has had a discussion on the PDI, the scores, and the thematic scores that has been presented, and they would be talking about it. These are the numbers at a glance. You have nine LSDG themes, you have local targets, you have the indicators, you have indicators including sub indicators. Sub indicators are that which can be coming within it. Like if you have a transition rate, you have a transition rate of primary, upper primary, secondary. So those are some indicators of the transition. Similarly, it's a sufficient infrastructure. You have a primary school. So what is the condition of the primary school? For it, you have electricity, you have water, you have toilets. So you go down that and you can specify sub indicators. When you have common indicators, which is common for everybody, there are specific indicators which are for certain areas and not for others. So if I do not have uh, a PHC in my village, I am not going to be counted in the specific indicators. Uh, then there is a repeated indicators that are there in some indicators and repetitive indicators. So the repetitive indicators of 66 are repeated totally 147. Unique indicators, similarly data points, repeated data points and unique data points. So here you have the breakup to show as to what is the total number of unique indicators. So if we collect indicators of 496, we would be able to get the calculation for 577 indicators. 
to get those high 77 indicators, you have to get data points that have to be, the data has to be collected on. So there, the unique data points to be collected are 688. The next thing I'd like to present to you people is regarding data. Data being very important for this entire process. So can you please play the next presentation? Central to the PDI. Data availability is there for 688 data points as has been seen through the work proof of concept. Data sources that have also been explained in terms of the ministries from which it is. And here I'd like to specifically mention that the Crown Homes Panchayat is also a data source, especially for that data which is not available presently. It is with the GP, it can be collected by the GP, and also it needs to be collected through survey. Because currently you will not get the data even if you actually go to collect it. For example, crimes against women. There are data sources mapped to ministries. And you also have data available in flagship missions. So this is part of the work that is to be done to figure out where the data is available as the primary data source. This is available in ministry portals at GP level. So not all data is at GP level presently. These are the various dashboards. You can also see the representation in GIS maps which you see in the dashboard. So there is a lot of administrative data that is there and all of them are actually doing data entry in the GP. This is when you look at data entry in the GP, this is part of the work we did in the field visit and it was completed by Dr. Kachiti and his team which I we recommend that every state needs to do this if they want to take forward the process of data collection. They need to see, see where is this data available in the GP. Where is it? Who, who has it? And how do you obtain it? Which register there is? Which particular place that it is there? Along with this, they also need to do the data portals. The portals of the ministry where they enter the data. I could really give a picture because when you enter it, you always enter the GP. GP, law, you go into those levels to actually get the data into the portals. So the data collection must be easy. It was very difficult for us because we didn't have the necessary uh, tools that to require, are required in terms of the ease of putting in data. There were no APIs, but all this will be coming in. Data sharing is very important. Data validation. Here I would really like to mention about the Bangla Parameter, which is an excellent system which is recommended because it looks at neighborhood committees where the data is provided, especially where the GP is going to be getting the data. It is very important that we have a validation through them. The frequency of data collection. While the PDI is annual, the frequency needs to be more than annual in the sense that you actually get it monthly or quarterly. Already it is coming in administrative data. That is because the budget can then see what it's doing and how it's progressing. You just give them an annual data and say this is your PDI. Does it enable them to do correction of course and see how their how their GPDP plan is actually working? And there should be a value for data collection. It's not a data collection for free. In APRP payments are made, for service payments are made. So for the sake of PDI, whatever is the additional data that's to be collected, there must be a value for that data collection. And this is an extremely important aspect in terms of training and capacity building. As I mentioned earlier, it is also part of the UN data strategy. And in this, we suggest that there should be a learning phase. This is the first phase where the core group of trainers is for training. They do the field visit, they do the identification, and they also do an exercise of data collection. From there, they are in a good position to then look at the final phase, where you create these district training groups. And from they do a similar exercise, and they are also able to collect it from about one to five GPs. Then you go for the expansion, where the district groups are training other district collection teams. For every GP, you have it that we have the people to collect the data, and then by that, you get the statewide data collection. So we've seen uh, regarding data, uh, data validation is already covered. Uh, there are just about two more small presentations left. I am getting messages saying, please finish early. Uh, it's difficult for me to control this uh, speed now. If I were there, probably I would be able to finish early. But there are some couple of aspects in it. Uh, so I would request that you please play the next uh, presentation. It's about three minutes. It is on the Panchayat Development Index. The aspects of PDI we have already seen and just putting it together for you. With the indicators and NI, the data source, the themes. Would like to mention about the reference period. The reference period, what we have taken from the proof of concepts was on the 31st of March of 2022. 
You can look at their earnings periods at the end of the financial year, and then there may be a different earnings period for agriculture, for instance, but it is all right as long as everybody, every panchayat has the same earnings period. A baseline, which is the first thing that needs to be done, and then hope that it gets done before the next GPDP is prepared. This is the starting point where you say where are the panchayats today under the panchayat development index? What is their composite score and position? Target values, these need to be fixed by the panchayats. So like panchayats, if they are say in the range of the 40s, then they would have a different target value or if a panchayat is in the range of 60s, they'll have a different say, a target value of 70 that they can fix. So you can't expect that a panchayat which has a score of 40 is going to achieve 70 immediately. So these target values should be fixed through groups of panchayats. The frequency I've already mentioned, We've, the assessment and grades that just come to, data analysis, data visualization I've already spoken about. In the calculation, I'd like to mention the important aspects of common indicators, specific, mandatory and priority. The mandatory indicators could be like at least 100 or 125 that every panchayat can choose to work on. So if that is made mandatory, then automatically there will be a movement in, this, in the development scores of various panchayats. The priority, there is a national priority, there are state priorities, there are flagship missions. So automatically there is an attention to them. But in the panchayat development index, the recommendation is that the priority should be decided by the GPs because they know their ground realities the best and that is what is the ideal way to move forward. The other aspects are being covered by Dr. Sankar. Awareness in assessment is what we think is essential because if I don't have a PHC, you can't give me a, a low score because of that. As it is a disadvantageously placed, you can't make me worse in my score. So there is a common to all and there is a certain that is specific only for some of the panchayats and not for all. So we look at the scores based on the commonality. Then we put in the specific and we also try to equalize the specific with a certain method. Progress assessment, we start with the baseline and then we go to a current year. So baseline to current year, there can be an assessment. There can also be an assessment which you say from the current year to the target. What have we fixed as a target value? There can also be an assessment which is say from the previous year to the current year, that is as we go along. All these methods are valid best methods for progress assessment, but whatever is chosen can be needs to be applied to all the GPs. And this is the ranking and grades that we've been talking about. Incentivization is extremely important. The national level you have the NPA. States need to look at incentivizing because they can do a larger number. At district, there are different types of incentivizing that is possible. And only at the block level we recommend ranking. Ranking at a block makes a lot of difference to the panchayats. But you can't do ranking at a higher level because of the small differences in the decimal points and won't be correct to rank. So grades are at every level, block to the national level, but ranking and block level. And the approach for the developing of the PDI, this is what it is, and now we come to the computation of the PDI. I'd just like to mention that when we are using words like achiever, front runner, it would be ideal to use words that are of local language when this is being taken forward, so the assessment is understood better by the people, by the GPs. And now bring you to the last part of the presentation, which is on challenges and limitations, which they have been trying to show for quite some time. So can you play the last one, please? The challenge and limitation of EDI. What is the challenge? It's something that calls for great mental or physical effort to be done successfully. It tests a person's ability. You need to convince a person to perform an action. That's a challenge for you. And it is a dare, it is an invite to take part in a competition. What would be a limitation? That it is not as good as it could be, or it has an imperfect, imperfection that limits its use or value. PDA is a challenge. It calls for a new paradigm of thinking. It has data and indicators, analysis, interpretation and use, which is very, very important, which need to come in. But it is not a panacea for all use. It works along with schemes. It works along with the key performance indicators. It's not something that comes instead of it. But limitation should not be placed by officials saying, okay, let them only do so many indicators at a time. The GPs with whom we had worked, they in fact added indicators. To them it is their life and they would be able to do much more than these officials would be able to do. And time and again they have shown us that. The PDI is a challenge for all. The limitations can be overcome with GPs in the forefront. 
There is no plan B because we do not have a plan B. We have to work and galvanize our action. UN Secretary General Ban Ki Moon. Recommendations I have covered in the various presentation parts. I have made the institutionalizing of PDI, starting with the baseline and making it an annual feature and completely within the system. Incentivization I have mentioned. The scope of PDI is tremendous. It must be easy to use. It is an evolving and continuous process and the report is just a beginning. We need to go down to Hamlet and household levels and it has a use for policy, program, planning, focus at all levels, ministries, states, districts, sub-district level, GP, anyway. It is a game changer at the GP level. We can have something like aspirational panchayats, the mandatory number of indicators and priority indicators to be decided by GP which needs to be emphasized. And the standardizing of source of GP profile related data, which needs to be done. We need to establish a proper end to end IT platform for the PDI, from data collection to data analysis presentation. Recognize that quality, timely, relevant, open, and disaggregated data are indispensable for effective, evidence based decision making to lead us towards a sustainable path for development in an inclusive society. The PDI rests on the belief that GPs can do a lot and they have shown us time and again that they can do it. And with the coordination support of all the departments, ministries, all of us, all people in the field, we can really make a tremendous difference in development in achieving these SDGs through the LSDGs. We expect that the PDI will be a model for the rest of the world. Thank you. Sorry I had to do this from online from a distance. I hope the videos played reasonably well for all of you. Thank you very much.